Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Ami, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What You Next podcast. I have a fun interview for you. Before we get to today's show, I want to share a bit about today's sponsor. It's a revised grantor by Kate Pierce. Here's a synopsis of the book. Attachment to the land, hard work, and community sets the folks in Morgantown apart from every day and always brings them back to the ranch where they he might even find love. After his father decides to leave the ranch to his older brother, usually calm, steadfast Ben Miller struggles to deal with the resentment. When he's invited to develop a trail rating experience on the Morgan Street Ranch, Ben jumps to the chance. Soon he's assigned to mysterious clients and actors who see family secrets once he are removed from the influences from LA. Ben's determined to teach her to fend for herself, but he quickly discovers she's more than a pamper for beauty face. Silver Meadows believes that she's preparing for a serious dramatic role, one that will free her from her controlling parents. She's certainly not going to be controlled by Ben, especially when he takes her out in the middle of nowhere to learn how to survive. Yet gradually far from the cell phone, Silver begins to open up to him about her life and finds that they have more in common than they thought. Soon romance blossoms, but can Jet Setty movie star and homebody cowboy find the best way to both worlds? This book sounds so good. If you like cowboy romance, but at the same time you like some celebrity, some LA influence, I think, and fish out of water into survival skills, I think this book is all for you. Um, you can purchase the Robertus Rancher in your favorite bookseller. For more book recommendations, please visit kensingtonbooks.com. Now let's get to the interview. So today I have one of my most anticipated interviews that I have done so far. I am chatting with Helena Hunting. I have shared in the past that I started reading romance in 2016. And one of the books that I series that I picked up was Puck. And it was everything. It had hockey, steam, raunchy humor. It was just so much fun. And so I ended up binge reading most of her backlist. I love her Chalking Up series, which is so much fun. It's just like, I think that one is like New York City, rich people having problems and falling in love so that was just a lot of fun so this week helena has a new release with our romance called kiss my cupcake and it's about dual and business rivals who are falling in love and be prepared for the cupcake creations because they sound so amazing like i asked elena like where did she come up with them and i want to eat them all so it's so good so the interview we're going to talk about her writing process her book her latest book and around the book recommendations now let's go to interview hi helena welcome to the watch readers podcast hi how are you so happy to have you here so excited so tell us a little bit about yourself um, so I live in Ontario, Canada, um, just kind of outside of Toronto with my husband and our two and our daughter. Um, she's a little bit more important than the two awesome cats that we have. And I love all things romance and I've written over 20 novels. So that's a little bit about me. I love it. So what inspired you to become a writer? So I've been writing stories as soon as uh, I was able to put a, words on a paper, but I never actually looked at it as a career path until after my daughter was born in 2008. So I started writing sort of for myself and I and then started posting online. And I met some really amazing people in that online community where we were all kind of writing and posting and uh, many of them have gone on to publish as well. And through those friends that I've made, I was inspired to publish on my own. And now here I am writing full time. I love it. And so what was your journey to get that first book published? Uh, there was a lot of editing and there was a lot of rewriting and there was a lot of scrapping. And um, the first draft, so the first book I ever published was Clipped Wings and Inked Armor and it's a duet. And it was a duet before duets became popular. Um, so it, it, the first draft of that was over 400,000 words, which oh, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, which is really, really long and a lot of work to edit down into something reasonable. Um, so it was shopped at the beginning as a trilogy and, uh, it just, it was, too, it was too long. Um, so eventually I started ripping it apart and uh, writing it over again 
uh, or editing it down. The first book was more of an edit. And then by the time I got to the second book, I just stopped looking at the old manuscript because it was just more time and energy than it was worth. And then just kind of rewrote the second half of the book. And that the published versions of those are um, about 100,000 words each. Uh, so, and it was picked up by Gallery Book, published in 2014. But yeah, that was, that was, a very good lesson to learn for me in terms of uh, writing first drafts and editing. And nothing took nearly as long as that one did <laughs> um, to, to get into shape. That's amazing. I think it's like, it's a process. I think when you start, it's like daunting. And then as you do more often, you find systems, you find ways to do it that will get easier. As Absolutely. Process. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. And I think that first trip down editing road is always the scariest um, because you're, you know, you, it hadn't, it wasn't something that I'd done before, not, you know, outside of essays in, in university. Um, it was not a process I'd really gone through and not to that extent and not with cuts, like such heavy, heavy cuts. So you published from multiple houses and we just talked about this briefly. Um, what's yes. the process like to get your books published in two different houses? Like, because they're they're very really unique, each one of them in their universe world. So, yeah. So, um, it takes a lot of organization um, and a lot of structure uh, with with working with three different houses. Um, and then self-publishing. So usually we kind of have an idea of, of what publisher wants what from me, right? So for Forever Romance, I do romantic comedies. They tend to be uh, a, a little lighter, but with some depth, right? There's like, mm -hmm. Meet Cute is a good example of that beautiful, bright, sunny cover, um, but inside the story, there's, you know, there's, loss and and all of those other important things that are kind of balanced out with humor um and then for st martin's press they they published the shacking up series with me and that's rom-com it's super fun um it's all you know heroes with last names for first names and uh they they've been a lot of fun and i've actually started a new series with them and it's a it's a bit it's i can't write without comedy but it's a bit more contemporary romance and I'm super excited for those. Um, and then Mod Lake is, I did a sports romance uh, series, a spinoff of the Puck series. And that was a lot of fun. And, and it was just sort of a little bit closer to like my self-published Puck series, I guess, crazy comedy, but, but then uh, maybe a bit more contemporary as well. And I think writing kind of shifts and, and, changes over time and and the the stories that i tell and the subjects that i want to tackle change along with it especially you know world circumstances change and yeah and there's all sorts of other pieces that kind of come into play well i'm excited for the Martin's press series i love the mom lake series and i love your horror titles so <laughs> I'm oh like yeah I love, I love writing them all. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about your writing. Do you follow an outline or do you see where the short leads? Yeah. Well, after Clipped Wings and Inked Armor and the 440,000 word manuscript that got cut in half, um, I decided it was probably in my best interest and in the interest of my sanity if I used outlines. Um, and, and I decided that it was going to be fairly extensive outlines. So I usually have, my outlines are anywhere between five and 10,000 words. And I know a lot of people don't do things like that or just have really short outlines, but I outline everything chapter by chapter. I structure it knowing like when my, um, you know, where my inciting incidents are and what my conflicts are just so it's a very streamlined process. And because my deadlines are very, there's not a lot of wiggle room. I, I need to be able to follow um, a fairly solid, clear outline. So I know where I'm going and then my characters don't run away on me and do things that they're not supposed to <laughs> in the context of the story. 
I love it. Um, so how do you organize your how do you organize yourself as a writer? How do you keep track of your ideas, inspirations, characters, especially writing a series? Oh yeah, writing series can be um can be fairly complicated. Uh especially something like the Puck series and then the there's the all in series spin-off. So that it that's like 10 full-length novels in there. So I have family trees. I have a whiteboard that takes up the majority of one wall in my office and I'll write things down and I'll put family trees down and um uh, yeah having the working out outlines really helps. I'm writing a new book and I started uh writing down all the names of every character that I introduce and how they're related to each of the main characters, just so I can keep um, keep track of, of all of those pieces. But yeah, it's a lot of, there's Pinterest boards, there's, um, there's always my outlines, uh, and there's, you know, all the research that you do along the way just to kind of put all those, those characters together. And, uh, and I do a lot of um, Google mapping of places and distances and how far is this from this? And yeah, sometimes we go and visit the places, but not right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> not right now. Not right now, but maybe yeah. in the future. <laughs> yeah, maybe in like another year, maybe two, we'll see. Yeah. Or we can just go within Ontario, Canada. That's fine. We're allowed, yeah. to, we're allowed to travel within the province. In the province of Ontario, if, I don't know, I don't think a lot of people know this, it's actually to get from one end to the other by car, it's over 20 hours. It takes oh. longer to get from one end of Ontario to the other than it does from, uh, for us to drive from here to Florida. Oh my gosh. I know, it's crazy, right? Canada's massive. That's massive. I know, it is, it's wild. But you don't want to go up there in the winter, it's cold. <laughs> So speaking of which, um, would you set a book in Ontario or Toronto or ne in Canada, or would you stick around to the U.S.? I usually, I usually stick to the U.S. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem writing in Canada, but I do find that with a with a majority uh, of my audience based out of the states, um, sometimes it's a bit more, it's a bit easier to relate geographically to that, yeah. and and. I mean, we've done, I'm, I'm so fortunate now that we've been able to travel and see a lot of different areas in the U.S. Um, and, you know, I, I, we did a trip out to Colorado a couple of years ago. And those kind of, those places sort of stick with you and you want to kind of write about them because they're so, so they're interesting. They're different, right? Different from what I know. Yeah, they're different. I think it's funny, yeah. like, I just moved to Chicago, so all of the Puck series were set in Chicago. Like, it was mm -hmm. just, like, kind of, like, funny. It was, like, it's, like, one of those books that was, like, transported because I'm, I'm new to sight on scene, so I moved, like, I only visited Chicago briefly on a conference, so I only saw it for one day. Um, yeah. And then I was, like, well, let me just start, and I was, like, you know, Puck series, all these other books are set in Chicago, so it seems like it could be like a fun city to move. So, yeah. and so you moved there. I moved there. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Well, it's Chicago and Toronto are actually like geographically and the, the kind of the way the cities are set up and designed are are quite similar. So it's not a huge stretch to write uh, as a Canadian to write Chicago because it Chicago is in a lot of ways similar to Toronto. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So do you share a walk along the way or do you wait for the completed father series? Um, usually I, I hold on to the story until I've completed it and it is, uh, and I've read it through. But there have been a few times where uh, I've, I've wanted a little feedback at the beginning just to make sure that I'm on track. But most of the time it, it doesn't get passed over to, or no one's, no one's eyes see it until um, it's a complete draft. So now let's talk about Kiss My Cupcake. What was the source yeah. of inspiration? Uh, well, I've always, always had a serious uh, love of cupcakes. The first, uh, my first books at, that I ever wrote, um, Clip to Wings and Inked Armor, the, the heroine liked to bake cupcakes. And I, I'm a fan of them um, and, and a fan of baking in general. So writing uh, a heroine who runs her own cup cake and cocktail shop was just like super fun. Um, my, and my dad ha, uh, grew up 
working with his dad in a, a sign painting shop. It was like a family run business. Um, so I already had an idea of what it was like to run a family business and, and what that looks like and what it entails. Um, so the idea of putting together these two very different bars, one, you know, that has really deep family roots and another with a heroine trying to make her own mark and then pitting the two against each other was just, it was such a fun book to write. And it was, it was a neat concept to explore. It was awesome. So let's talk about cupcakes because you just mentioned. Yes. So were you yes. a baker and how did you come up with this various flavor combinations? Because they were awesome. I wanted um, to go to the cupcake shop. Well, the maple bourbon bacon business, um, I just really, all of those things sound delicious. And I thought in a cupcake, that would be amazing. Um, especially with the, I don't know, have you ever had, I'm, um, gonna go off on a tangent here um have you ever had um like candy bacon before yes. were they yes oh my gosh it's the best thing i've ever had um so putting that with a cupcake just seemed like a good idea so my daughter is a really big fan of um i think it's oh my gosh i'm gonna get the name wrong i think it's cake wars mm -hmm. where they have the people and they all go against each other and there's like three different he like they have three different heats it's like the survivor of cake um and they make cupcakes and they make all sorts of desserts and then they make this giant cake at the end and it's so cool um so we watched a lot of that and so they had some amazing cupcake flavors and uh, my personal favorite is actually just vanilla cupcakes with vanilla icing um <laughs> which is boring but uh, also very tried and true and usually rather delicious yeah, I love vanilla vanilla, and I used to, when I lived in New York, there's so many coffee shops. It was the time where Magnolia was like a big deal. And yes. All the other coffee shops came out there, and so it was like, it was funny enough, like vanilla vanilla, they can mess it up too. Like you, you yes. could go and try it, and we're like trying to, but you never know, like they may try something different, or the cake might be too dry, or the icing might be too sweet, or you know. Yep. So it can be it can be a hit or miss yeah but it's it can, so it can. yeah the, it's all in the it's all in the buttercream i think yeah. i think that really and the moistness of the cake and this is really the only time you can say the word moist and it's acceptable yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this book is said it's rivals to robbers um why is have this relationship i start competing bars I'm trying to get the YouTube competition aspect of, you know, in order for them to succeed. So one of my favorite things um, that I like to write is banter. Uh, so setting them up as rivals made, made that really easy because you could have these characters goad each other um, and then you, it escalates to, to just absolutely ridiculous portions and they start playing pranks on one another. Um, and there's always that really thin line between love and hate, right? Mm -hmm. So you can play up on that and that YouTube competition, that was so much fun to add in there. It was just another dynamic to their relationship and it gave them a reason to try and one up each other all the time, um, and push, push each other's buttons. Yeah. And I love the fact that they're, once they realize they were like, they can work better together. The whole idea yeah. of joint events, the whole idea of like planning things around, like it helped kind of like build a relationship. Like just yeah, they were like they they wanted to support each other, even though they were rivals. Exactly, and I think I really love um, a, a slightly uh, maybe like an organic move towards a, a romantic relationship where there is that push and pull and then you see them working together and really getting along and, and maybe deciding that there's more to this than just, just the business side of things. Right. Yeah. I think it just, I, I love the fact that um, she felt bad about Thanksgiving. So she brings him home to see her crazy family and she forgets. Yeah, she her, does. Oh gosh, her crazy family. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And the crazy family let's talk about that <laughs> yeah i got <laughs> where did I come up? <laughs> um i sometimes i like to take like the most ridiculous things and just 
go with it. I really just felt like Blair is such a kind of put together, but very high strung. She's so high strung character. Um, and it, her family is just way out there. They're so off the wall. And they're just, it's fun to write that very odd, crazy dynamic because Ronan is the exact opposite. He's pretty chill and his, he's got lots of support and his family is, you know, very, very traditional and Blair's is very not. It was the, they're, they were just so much fun to write because it just, it threw in a level of, um, I don't know, ridiculousness and humor that was just really fun to play with. Yeah, I love it. I think when I thought Blair's family, I was like, oh my God. Like, yes. Your aunt, your uncle, your <laughs> this, your dad. What <laughs> is happening here? What is happening here? And then they're like, and now all these restaurants and all those different crazy stuff. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and her passion being so different than theirs right and the yeah. not wanting to bend um and and fold under the pressure uh that can sometimes come from working with family right and so i yeah. think it's a very different take because ronan was all about um trying to do what he could for his grandfather and in this case blair's trying to do what she can uh, separate from from her family, just to be her herself and an individual and stand on her own two feet. Yeah, I really love it. I love like the whole book itself. Like it was just like, oh, thank it was, you. like overall, like it was one of those rom coms that had some depth, but at the same time, it felt like it's a felt it felt like a great introduction to your work. Like that's what it feels like. like. I think it's yeah. I think it's like it's there's still because I don't think I can ever let go of like the kind of off the wall stuff like Blair's family. Yeah. But but it is a, a definitely a gentle introduction. It's not like you know pop series because that's not gentle. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you gotta read. You gotta listen or read pop series. Like, yeah. You know, like it is off the wall. So so good. <laughs> <laughs> but this, but but Blair and Ronan are like this. I, I don't, they're um, they're that kind of couple that are they're just kismet, right? Like they're yeah. meant for each other. They balance each other out. Yeah. So speaking of which, what are some of your upcoming projects? Um. So I've I have a bunch. Um. So I, this fall, after Kiss My Cupcake, we get this night nice fun rom com summer read. Um, I have a new adult angsty standalone coming uh, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, and it's a self pub. Um, it's Is that it's Lavender's book? Yeah, it's Lavender's book. Yeah, I'm very, I'm excited for it. It was, I wrote this book um, just for me. And this was actually one of the books where I didn't have a full outline until I was like 40,000 words into, into it. I, it just, it was, it, it just kept speaking to me. So I'd write down scenes in between other projects. And then I realized that I had 40,000 words and needed an outline. Um, and then I also turned in a book, the first book, um, for the new series for SMP, uh, and it's a contemporary romance and it made my agent cry in multiple parts of the books. And, and she is, this, this has never happened. I mean, she's read um, pretty much everything I've written and she has never cried before. So this is a serious one in my book. Um, so I, which is, I guess, weird to say, like if I make somebody cry, that makes me feel good. Um, it's, I think it's like the only profession where you can say I made somebody cry and feel good about that. Yeah. Uh, and then I, um, right now I'm working on a brand new uh, contemporary romance and I'm, I love it and I'm super excited about it because it's based on, um, uh, like my family have a, have a cabin. Uh, my parents have a cabin up north farther north than canada in within canada i mean uh and and so it's kind of like based on the lake that i grew up going to as a kid i love it and yeah. this is just like personal because you're just a personal question are we getting any more hockey books 
So um, there is some hockey, a little bit in a lavender story, not a ton, um, but I will say that I have plans for her older brother Maverick and he plays hockey. So there will be hockey. I don't think I can let it go. Okay. I love it. <laughs> hockey is how I, it was my gateway drug. That's how I ended up reading um moments it was through hockey so anytime there's like hockey moments it's like it's my cat then so i oh, her, you, yeah. thanks to pog and then i just haven't stopped reading you um so i'm like be right with hockey <laughs> so i'm like please yes yeah i will i'm not gonna walk away from hockey um it, even if it's you know just little snippets here and there oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, now let's go to a round of book recommendations. This is an opportunity for you to share with the audience what is your week next. What is your favorite genre? Um, so I would say that my favorite genre to read, and I don't know if this will come as, as a surprise or not, but I mean, I love paranormal romance. Um, I do love contemporary romance too, and sometimes I really like historical, but paranormal is, is my absolute go-to. I love it. And who is your favorite yeah. author? So that's... A, that's a hard question and I don't think I can name a favorite because so many of the authors that I love are my friends and they are my favorites um and you know I've got yeah I've, I've got a massive list but if I'm going to name people who are, yeah not um some people in the in the paranormal genre would be J.R. Ward and Karen Marie Monning. And then there's a Canadian author named Alyssa Marr. I love her stuff. Um, and then there's another Canadian author, and I don't think I'll ever get over her books, and I read them in university, and her name is Anne Marie McDonald, and she wrote a book called Fall on Your Knees, and it's fantastic. All right. It's also 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah. What has yeah. been a book you read this past year that you love? Um, so I'm going to be honest, um, I have had an incredible number of deadlines. So reading has, I haven't been able to do a lot of that, but I am so excited to read Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer um, in August. And I will drop everything to read that book, but don't tell my agent I said that. Um, because yeah, I'm so stoked. And that's, yeah, she's one of my favorite paranormal. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't wait. Like, I, bring me, bring on the YA and see. I mean, I know we all know what happens in the end with that book, but I have been waiting for it for probably, whatever, 15 years now. So I, yeah. yeah. I'm so stoked. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. <laughs> Tell us where you can find me online. Uh, so www.helenahunting.com is my website and you can find me um, on Facebook at Helena Hunting. And you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Helena Hunting. That's Thank you, that's, Thank yeah, you that's for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, or rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Want to join a romance-loving community? Want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As, and book recommendation meetups? Make new friends? Then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. What to Read Next Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.